Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about some brass, bronze, and copper snare drums. So I'm going to show you some drums that I use a lot to record and work with, and then I'm going to uh, do another segment where I play them on the drum set and compare them. So here we have six drums that I use very often, and I have lots and lots of brass drums if you watched my snare drum videos, my orchestra snare drum video, and my drum set snare drum videos, you saw that I have lots of different brass and all kinds of metal snare drums. But these six are my favorite and I use them all commonly um, for different things and we'll talk about that. So let me just tell you what these drums are real quick. The lighting in here is not great so uh, so we'll just deal with it but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see the drums clearly. So this one right here this is a pearl Marvin Smitty Smith snare drum and it is copper and this drum is no longer made I wrote down some dates here so you have them and uh, this drum is from the 1990s and you can find these used from time to time this is a really great snare drum it is not expensive I think new it was a couple hundred bucks and uh, now they're probably not even that much more than that uh, they probably will go up in time, but I think they're probably around maybe 350 now, that neighborhood. And this is this one is in mint condition. I do have two of these. I have one I gig with, since it's one of my favorite drums. Anything I take out a lot, I'll buy two of them. So if something happens, it gets stolen or messed up, I still have the other one. Especially since I know most of these kinds of drums do get discontinued over time. So this is my minty fresh one. I use this in the studio but I do not take it out and gig with it. So it's basically brand new. Uh, all the parts are original except I did change out these tension rods like I showed you some sometimes. I changed them out with the brass tension rods. This happens to match this drum pretty well but I just like them. I think they last longer. They look better and I have lots and lots of these so uh, once again I do save all the old parts so if I ever sell the drums then uh, I put the old parts back on so this is a Pearl Marvin Smitty Smith of course Smitty Smith is a great jazz drummer for those of you who don't know he's still active and playing so you should check him out especially some of the old recordings with Steve Coleman they're really pretty amazing all right and I have a diplomat very thin uh, coated head on here and on the bottom I have a diplomat well actually I put an ambassador on this one I must have run out of diplomats normally I put a diplomat on the bottom but it sounds great so I'm just gonna leave that like it is all right and then to my right your left I have this uh, really really great drum this is a, another pearl drum and this is a Jimmy DeGrasso I think that's how you say it snare drum he of course is a pretty well-known rock drummers played with lots and lots of really great bands and he's a heavy hitter uh, this drum I got this on a whim I was in a music store years ago I said man that looks like a really pretty drum and I love pearl snare drums so so I bought it and it was cheap I mean I think it was used and I probably got it for like $150 and it turned out to be just an amazing sounding drum it's just really thick sounding it's got a beautiful ring you hear you see I put a power stroke head on this and I bought another one of these recently uh, because again I do gig with it and I wanted to have an extra so I did find one recently and that was quite a bit more money because they have not made these these were made uh, in the um, I don't know 2008 2009 uh, timeline and I believe they're not made anymore I don't think they are so anyway this is a gold plated brass drum it's not copper and it's hammered and like I said you'll you'll see what I play it's just a great sounding drum and I will like I said I have a power stroke coated head on there uh, it controls the ring a little I don't have to use any muffling and on the bottom uh, I put a Yamaha basically uh, ambassador snare head on there all right, now below that, we have the famous, uh, let me make sure I get the numbers right here. This is a Sonar HLD 593. It's a lacquered bronze drum, very heavy. This thing probably weighs 20 pounds. And it's a 14 by three and a half. 
Now, both these other drums, the Jimmy DeGrasso, that was a five and a half. And if I didn't say it, the Marvin Smitty Smith is a four by 14, almost a piccolo. This is a true piccolo. And this went along with the other drum, the giant deep drum. I believe it was a 14 by seven or maybe even eight. It's a monster snare drum. I think it weighed probably 35 to 40 pounds. I did have one of those. It did not sound good. I could not use it on anything. It was really loud. It wasn't sensitive. So I got rid of that. I should have held on to it because they're worth a fortune now. And I bought one of these. Now, th th this was in the 1980s. So I got this new, and it is basically brand new. I do not have two of these. And now these are just going up in the $3,000 area, especially one this condition. Uh, it's, it's in really great shape. But I have used this live, and uh, I've gigged with it for a long time. It's got a great crack to it. And actually, it can sound a lot lower than it is. Uh, I've done some of my broad strokes uh, videos for tap space on this drum. Actually, I might include one with this video so you can see what it sounds like. It's really deceptive. The drum sounds a lot deeper than it is. And again, it's very heavy, uh, and it is bronze all the way through. I believe the hoops, though, might be copper. I'm not sure, but uh, it's a beautiful drum, okay? All right, so now we have here, this is a Slingerland brass drum, pretty common, and this drum, uh, I believe, was in the 1990s. It's got the Zoomatic throw-off, very smooth. It's a great drum. This drum has a really unique sound. It's a 12 by 5 and a half. It's a little drum, but it's not a popcorn snare. This thing is beefy. So it's a full range drum. You can tune it pretty low because of the depth of it. And uh, great rim shots on this drum. Sometimes when I'm doing double bass stuff, I'll put this drum up there because it fits nicely uh, when I'm using two pedals and my feet are close together, my legs are close together. Uh, you can find these. I think they're fairly common still. I don't remember. I got this used. I don't remember what I paid for it. Uh, but I do use this drum quite a bit, actually. So that is a Slingerland brass drum. 12 by 7. Not, not 12 by 6 if I said that. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm running out of space. Put this here. This drum here. Uh, this is a really interesting story. Make sure I get the name right. This is a Ludwig and Ludwig. So it's an old drum from the 1920s. It's a 14 by 4, I think. And uh, this was called the Standard Professional. I believe it was the dance model. Now originally this was black nickel. So it was coated. But when I, I got it, I got it for, I'm embarrassed to say, I bought it for 50 bucks, okay? And I know these things run up into the 2000s now. But a long, long time ago, I was on tour and I saw it in a pawn shop, and it would look horrible. It, it had this black lacquer. I knew right away what it was because I saw the strainer. And the lacquer was just horrible. It was all coated with crap, and it looked like it had been left outside. And the lugs were in bad shape. Everything was in bad shape. So what I did was I just bought it, like, super cheap. The guy thought it was a piece of junk. It's actually fairly light. And I said, okay, I'm going to make this a project. So I put it away. And when the tour was over, lasted a couple months, I, um, I brought it home and I brought it to a guy who uh, does brass lamps. There's a guy in New York down on Canal Street. And I, I known this guy because I had some hardware um, worked on by him. And I said, hey, man, is there anything you can do with this thing? Because it's, it's, you know, in bad shape. He looked at it and just laughed. He says, it looks like one of my old lamps that I get. So he says, I can strip that nickel planning off for you. It had some enamel and then the nickel planning. I said, okay, great. And it's got somewhere, it's got the Ludwig name stamped there. I'll see if I can take a picture and put a close up. Uh, let's see if I can find it. There it is. You won't see it now, but I'll, I'll do a close up. It's right next to the strainer. So we'll see if we can get up real close there. And it's pretty faint. So it's not engraved or anything. Anyway, so I, I hope for the best. You know, he wasn't going to charge me that much. So I came back, and he had, I guess he boiled it in a cauldron <laughs> and put some chemicals in. Because when I got it back, the shell was just gorgeous. And he said, man, this is some beautiful brass that they used on this thing. 
And then, so I had them do the rims as well. And then I also had them do the uh, tension rods, and they're also brass. Uh, so it was just came out really good. It's it's actually pretty cool. It's got some dents, like I said, it looked like it was strewn war. But I did hammer a few of those out. It's still got a little bit of the black lacquer. He wasn't able to get it all off, but this drum sounds really, really good, as you'll see. It's very warm and dark. These old drums with the thin brass shell have just a beautiful sound to them, these old Ludwig drums. Uh, almost like the old Black Beauties, uh, very similar to that. So that's what that, uh, that drum is, okay? So Ludwig and Ludwig, professional, dance model, nickel over brass, no more nickel on there. And finally, this drum is heavy, gotta be careful, okay. This is really heavy. This drum is about 35 pounds. This is a GMS bell brass snare drum. So let me turn this snare off here. Okay. So this, everybody knows about GMS, the New York drum company. I don't know if they're still in business. I don't believe they are. They made great drums, though. I have several of their snare drums. And there you see the GMS logo. And that... GMS strainer, which I'm not a big fan of. I think I talked about that in my uh, other video, uh, my drum set snare video. It's noisy, it's shaky, and it's big. It comes out. So they should have done something about that. But uh, that's their strainer. It works. I haven't had one break. It's just not the best strainer. It's a little bit noisy. The drum itself, though, is tremendous. And bell brass is very thick brass. My teacher, Fred Hinger, they used to make a drum out of sewer pipe. I should have bought one of those. I had the opportunity to back in the 80s, but I just didn't have any money. So, uh, But he still had a few, and I could have bought one. And I'm still looking for one. If anyone's got one they want to sell, that drum, again, is about 40 pounds, and it's, it's about as thick as this, and it was a great-sounding orchestral snare drum. So I use this once again. So it's a 13 by 7, so I use it once again when I play double bass. And I have to have my feet close together or I'm doing like a clave pedal or something because it fits really well in there. Uh, it's a good sound drum, all right? Uh, it does have a lot of a snare kind of sound, so when you hit the toms. Oh, and I did use this on my double bass video that I did recently. So if you want to hear more of the snare, you can hear it on that. And you'll see when I play the toms and stuff like that, it gets a lot of snare sound from the toms. It does not have any snare beds in it at all, and that could be a reason why. All right, but just it's it's a really nice drum. These are extremely rare So if you see one and it's reasonably priced you should snatch it up. I've only seen one other in my whole my whole um, Lifetime and that one had black lugs on it and this one has silver lugs sometimes they did that GMS they coated their hardware in black So anyway, that's that's this drum. So these uh, six drums are the drums I use most of all my metal drums. I, d I do use the Ludwig Superphonic and the Black Beauty that I showed you recently quite a bit, but mostly I'm, I'm using, um, and of course the Black Beauty is a brass drum, so I use that a lot. So that Superphonic is really the only other metal snare drum, and that, I have two of those, like I said, I have a Ludaloy, which is basically an Acrolyte drum that's coated, maybe I'm wrong, but it's 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 got a chrome coating on it. And so someone correct me if that's wrong. But, uh, and then the Black Beauty, which is black nickel over brass. And that's a great sound. That is a brass drum, just like uh, this one and this one. The, uh, the only thing about that is I do leave calf heads on that. There's no calf heads on these. So uh, these are used a lot in the studio. I don't have to worry about breaking a head. So we'll take a pause here and we'll go over to the drum set and I'll put these uh, one by one on the kit so you can hear what they sound like. So we're over here on the drum set, and the first drum we'll put up is this Ludwig and Ludwig that I showed you first. There's a few things about this drum I did forget to mention. It does have the straight rims, so it's kind of hard on your sticks. The other thing is it has these claw tension rods that hold the rim on there, so it's separate pieces, and they tend to break. It's very soft brass. So if you tighten it too much over time, they just basically split in half. And they're really hard to find, and they're expensive. Pearl makes a version of them. Uh, they're about $5 a piece, which isn't bad, but they're not brass. They're going to be steel. And I have those on some of my Pearl Philharmonic drums. 
So I'm always very careful about tightening this drum too much because I have broken a few. So right now the drum is pretty low where I usually have it. It's actually a big sounding drum. Now an alternative if you had one of these would be to put just uh, an eight lug regular brass rim on here, which I have done, and then you can crank it up pretty high. The only other thing I'll say about this drum is that the strainer, if you hit the drum hard, will go off. And there's nothing you could do because it's just not meant to be hit hard. I guess in those days, uh, folks didn't play too hard, and it'll go off eventually on its own. So you got to keep your eye on that and keep turning it on. In other words, keep bringing it up. So that happens with a lot of these old Ludwig strainers. Now this is a drum I use for playing jazz a lot, but today we're not going to be doing much jazz. I'll do a little clip, but this is kind of a you know, rock fusion set. So the symbol I'm using is this heavy Jack D. Jeanette symbol. So it's not really a jazz kit, but I'll be playing a few different styles with each drum. Uh, some backbeat stuff, I'll play some jazz stuff, and I'll play a little bit of a of a samba for you and some cross room stuff so you can hear each drum just about a minute each so we'll start out with this drum and we'll play always snares on snares off uh, i'll show you some of that so here's snares on so the drum is very very sensitive So you never lose snare sound, which is great. The other thing about this drum, which is nice, is you don't get too much snare response from the toms. Normally you'll get the most from this 10 inch tom if you use one. A lot of it is sympathetic vibrations depending on your tuning. So if your tuning is similar like this, liable to get more snare sound on the toms. So you can fix that by changing the tuning of your drums. But a lot of times you don't have choices, so certain snares are going to uh, give less sympathetic buzz, and I'll show you some of these. Some more, some less. This particular one is not too bad. So I'll play a few different styles for you now. like this drum a lot and I use it a lot. Now I'm going to do a separate video on with the jazz drums and this is one of the drums I use for playing jazz. So when we have the old K's up and this you'll see the you know the relationship the cymbals have with this dark sounding drum. The only th other thing I need to say which I forgot is miking wise I am not miking this drum close. We're only using one stereo mic over my head and then we're using a, a bass drum mic. That's it. So it's a very dry room in here. So you're, well, not very dry, but moderately dry. So really you're hearing the sound uh, 
as you would hear it if you were in the room. There's no compression, there's no EQ, it's just the mic uh, that's over my head. This is a AKG C24, which is a great mic, but that's really all you're hearing. And it's, it's a pretty accurate mic. It's got a little top end boost around 5K. Uh, naturally, that happens with the capsules. That's it. All right, so we'll put this one down and we'll grab another one. Let's see here. All right, so we have this Slingerland drum, and this is the 7x12 that I told you about. And we're going to have to change the stand up here a little because it's a very small diameter drum. And we won't tighten this too much. We'll just leave it <laughs> like it is. That's, that'll be fine. All right, so this drum's got a lot of crack, and it's got a really nice uh, rim shot sound. So it's a really high sounding, solid sound. Now, it does have a good bit of ring, but it's nothing I would feel the need to muffle. If we muffle it slightly with this piece of leather, you get this. So I feel like when I do that, the drum loses all its personality. It's like putting a, a mute on it. So I like it wide open. A little Latin stuff. Now, one thing I should mention on a 12-inch drum, you don't have a lot of real estate. So really, that click is going to suffer. So you really can't move it back. So that's a problem. Now, as far as snare buzz goes, hardly any. So it's great for that. So you can use this as a utility snare, maybe on your left, or even as a main snare. Now, in this video, I'm not doing the low high tuning that you see on so many videos, because I feel like these drums sound best in a particular tuning. And I have so many snare drums, if I'm on a low tuning, then I'll just go to a drum that sounds good low. I won't necessarily tune the drum down. So all these drums are tuned right now the way that I used them. All right, uh, the particular pitch that I like, I keep track of that. Each drum is different. So right here, that's the uh, sound, the pitch that I always have on this drum. All right, and it does sound like a timbali, totally when it's off. Okay, let's go to our next drum, and I think we'll pick this heavy GMS since it's kind of the same size. Oh boy. Like I said, this drum weighs about 30 pounds. It is a monster. 
bell brass drums are always very, very heavy, depending how thick they are. So this drum is 13 by, I believe, six or five and a half, somewhere around there. And this particular drum is very wet sounding. Now one thing about this drum I don't necessarily like, it gets a lot of buzz from the toms. It's got a good stairs off sound, a good tom sound. And I'd never use this drum for jazz. So the drums, like that Slingerland, the last one of this, I'll never use it for jazz. So we're not going to play any jazz. But I will show you some cross room with it. And of course, a great rim shot sound. All these heavy bell brass drums are going to have that. Okay, let's see if we can put this down. <laughs> so next, I'm going to open up this basket. Next, we're going to take this sonar drum out, this copper drum. And we talked about this drum. I have this tuned pretty high now. Now this is one of those drums that does have a huge range. And like I said, I will maybe put a clip in here. I'm not sure if I want to do it yet. Of one of my solos from my book Broad Strokes so you can hear the low tuning of it. But now we'll do a high tuning. So to me, this is a true piccolo drum. It's very crispy. It, it, it pops, you know? Almost the kind of drum you'd hear Roy Haynes playing back in the day. Uh, very high-pitched, snappy. It sounds really good uh, for playing kind of funk uh, rhythms with a rim shot. good for that all right and it also has a good cross from sound
and it does have a good sound for uh, playing stuff without the snares. So it's a great drum, but just a little different sound. I think a lot of it has to do with the, the bronze shell. It's very thick and very heavy. The thinner the shells, in my experience, the more open the drum's gonna sound. So this drum, believe it or not, is very dry sounding. And tuned low, it sounds pretty fat. And we'll put that clip up here so you can see some of that. All right. Now these final two drums are the drums I use most commonly in, uh, in playing situations where I want that high pitched ringing sound. So this first one is going to be this Marvin Smitty Smith drum. Now that's one of my favorite jazz drums. So when we do our jazz portion of this uh, with the metal drums, I'm going to um, uh, play that with my jazz kit with, with the old K so you can hear it. But for now we'll grab it. And I'll play you some stuff because this also works well for playing all kinds of music. It's a very versatile snare drum. And don't let the size fool you. This is a big sounding drum. And mechanically, there are no issues whatsoever with it. Just like most Pearl drums, it's built really well. And it's not that expensive of a drum either. I have it tuned really loose now as far as the snares go. If I tighten it up, The other thing about this drum, it feels great. It's a great, snappy, you know, responsive drum. That has to do with the size. It's not a lot of room for that air to move, so it's bouncing up and down in there. So the feedback is good on it. I use a Diplomat on here, a real thin head. With no snares, it sounds great. very musical drum and cross rim I'll play that for you
cross room's got a lot of ring, which is beautiful. So that's the Marvin Smitty Smith drum from the 1990s. Those were the days. Right. Finally. All right. We have this Jimmy DeGrasso. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Snare drum. Another great cheap drum. Really, back in the day, like I said, this was not too much. Under $300 for sure. And it's got the uh, Pearl Signature. Pro Signature Series, that's what they called it. And here I have a power stroke head. And this head dries up this drum, and I'm doing that on purpose, because I don't want to use any external muffling. So it gives it a real good pop. And I always keep a couple of these heads on hand to do this. So really good drum. So this is tuned low and I usually leave this drum tuned pretty low. I do not play much jazz at all with this drum. Let's see what it sounds like. Not bad, just kind of rockish, I'd say. Now for rock, it's just great. feeling drum. Now, it does not get a lot of snare buzz. It's the least amount of snare buzz of any snare I own, period, which makes it great for recording pop and rock music if you don't want to get any of that residual sound. And the snare's off. So it's okay, a little bit dull, but like for rock and pop, this thing is great. It's got a great sound. So we're pretty much running out of time here. The camera is flashing, which is telling me that we have a card issue. We're running out of memory. So we're going to stop here, but I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll do a lot more of these. Like I said, I have too many snare drums really to count at this point, and I'm trying to track all of them down. So as I do, We'll put more and more of these things up. So take care, and we'll see you next time.